All right, we're going to go through glute bridges today, and the reason they're called glute bridges is we use our glutes the most, and they are one of the fundamentals for core stability. And today I'm going to teach you what to do, how to work through pushing through your heels and use your glutes to activate your glute muscles in that movement. Now, speaking of that movement, the glute bridge, I'm going to show you lying down, we do it lying down, but in standing, it's technically this movement here, which is the start and the finish of any squat or deadlift. All right, so it's very important that we get this right. So think of, if I'm gonna squat or deadlift, that movement there, I've gotta make sure my, one, my spine is in neutral, and I don't go into extension or flexion, but also I want my glutes really activated and really working, because they're gonna help protect my back. So glute bridges, if you like, is a fundamental exercise to do before squats and deadlifts, all right? So let's have a look. The glute bridge is, basically done a lying down to start. This is your entry level bridge. And always make sure that you are in a neutral spine because that's what you want to be when you're doing squats and deadlifts in a neutral spine. So neutral spine is halfway between fully arched and fully rounded. So nicely halfway in between. And then you've got to make sure, again, when you're squatting and deadlifting, you're making sure your core is on. Now the best way to work on bracing your core is a quick breath out, a little breath like that, and it just tightens the core. Now you've got to keep that on and keep breathing. So making sure that's on and you're breathing the way through, you don't let that go. So this is on nice and tight, and I'm still breathing, so you can hear me talking. When I go into a bridge, I'm gonna start putting weight down through my heels. So I put weight down through my heels, it pre-fires me here, and then I just keep pushing down my heels, as I'm pushing them through the ground, and my pelvis will rise up. And then once it's rising, I keep pushing down through my heels, and I clench my butt cheeks together. It's not like I've got a credit card between my butt cheeks. And that pushes me right up into that position, which is the end position of that squat and deadlift. And I'm really working hard through my posterior chain, the back of my legs. And then slowly come down, make sure your core is in a block. And then you drop down so your buttocks, or the back of your pelvis, touches first. What I don't want you to do is do an articulated bridge, which is this little roll into the pelvic tilt. So I don't want you pelvic tilting posteriorly like that, because then you go into flexion. That's really bad for people with disc problems who are trying to do bridges. They don't want to go into flexion. So they've got to stay in neutral. You push down through your heels, maintain that neutral spine, and I'm hinging here. So this is stable. This is what's moving. So imagine a, a hinge point there, and I'm pushing down and hinging up and squeezing those butt cheeks together. And that's the top of the bridge. And then making sure I don't roll down like a snake at the top, I just come straight down, and so I'm hinging again there. All right, so that's your bridge. Now to make that harder, or make your, the work rate of your glutes even more, and their deep lateral rotators and your adductors, we put a band on. Now, this micro band is really good because it just, allows me to push out against resistance, all right? So I'm doing an actual external rotation, which is making, making my glutes fire more. So in this position, once I've got the hang of a glute bridge, I'll put a band on, and this is really gonna make me sort of keep my knees stable as well. If I've got one knee rolling in, it's gonna help me teach to, to keep my knee in alignment. And then same rules, I'm gonna push down through my heels, the neutral spine, nice and tight here, using my glutes. Now. At this point, I'm naturally pushing out the band to keep the legs out, which makes me work really hard here. All right, so once you've got a bit of strength, you can put the band on to add some more resistance, if you like, all right? So that's your band, that's your level two. Now, to go one step above that, you need to go into one leg, which is really helpful for single leg stability or single leg hip stability. So when I am doing a single leg bridge, what I don't want you to do is sort of raise one leg and try and come up. I want you to try and come up and then raise one leg. And that teaches you to try and keep a neutral pelvis at the top. So if I brace here, I'm gonna push my heels down, clench my butt cheeks together, get my top of the bridge position. Now I've gotta raise one leg. Now, if you just raise one leg, you tend to drop your pelvis on one side because you're not working hard enough here, you're not thinking about one side. So when you come up, you've gotta then put all my weight through my right leg to raise my left. So weight down through my right heel, Clench my right buttock harder without cramping my hamstring. And I'm just gonna try and slowly lighten the left, keep my pelvis level, and float that off. So you can see that pelvis is level. Put my heel back down the ground. Then I'm gonna swap sides. Clench my left buttock, weight down through my left heel. 
raise my right leg, put it back down the ground, and then not roll down, just drop down into that position there. Okay, so make sure that you're not letting your pelvis tilt left and right. And if you are a bit weak on the exercise, what you can do is just lighten one leg. So you sort of lift one heel off. It's almost like you're about to float one leg and then put it back down the ground again. Other side, float one leg off. Until you've got enough strength and control, that, you could, that leg just floats off the ground and back down and then drop down. And that's it.